Well, then we're here with another episode of Oregon Football Weekly. Um, we're headed into the eighth, sixth week of the season. Uh, we've got pretty much the team set up for who are going to make the playoffs or challenge for the playoffs. At Portland up at the top, they're unbeaten. We got um, Umpqua Valley is right there, right behind them with one more one loss of five and zero, four and one. Uh, Oregon Outlaws are down there at three and two. Klamath uh, is at three and two as well. And then Vancouver and Rogue uh, Warblers are at uh, two and three. A lot of uh, playoff action still waiting to happen. Vancouver, they're a, a game behind, but they got a great chance of making the playoffs depending on what happens with Klamath. Klamath, if they get to play host to Portland this week, that's our that's a big game. Portland's got to go down there, take a uh, bus ride that might be totally full, so I can't get on the bus, so I'll be here and uh, covering the Vancouver High Desert game. So, uh, and of course, it's a spring game for both Oregon and Oregon State. We'll talk about that in a second. Here's our players of the week. On offense, we got Alvin Thornton, the running back for Klamath. They beat Rogue uh, pretty good last week, 46 to 7. He had 20 carries, 133 yards, and a couple of touchdowns. And big win for them. Uh, Rogue Warriors are now in a position where they got to win three games to, to get into the playoffs, and they got to beat uh, three pretty good teams, including Portland. Um, and our defensive player. Defensive player is Steve Fittinger of the Portland Monarchs. He's a defensive tackle. He had eight tackles, six for loss, four sacks, one forced fumble, and a block kick and went over Springfield. But as I was pointing out, I don't think he recovered that onside <laughs> kick that uh, has been lighting up the league so good. Uh, <laughs> so, and our big week this uh, week, let's see here. Let me drop that and pick it up. Um, our big games, uh, Portland goes down to Klamath, Springfield's at Umpqua Valley, High Desert uh, is playing at Vancouver, that's the game I'll be at, and the Oregon Outlaws go down to the Rogue Warriors. Oregon's looking pretty good. They uh, got things rocking and rolling. Even the uh, even the Monarchs are looking at them saying, hey, those guys are uh, pretty good. They they We beat them, but they were getting their act together when we beat them in the second week of the season. So the spring game coming up, Oregon, Oregon State, uh, how much have you been following the uh, the Ducks? <laughs> you know what? I haven't really been following a, a ton of what, you know, just what I watch on ESPN. Of course, you know, they're going to report all the bad stuff. But, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to going down to the game. Um, that, I, I kind of make that our normal trip. You know, me and a, a couple of my kids going there, you know, get to tour the facilities and watch the guys play and, you know, uh, meet some of the coaches and whatnot. But, uh, you know, it, it, it really brings back some fond memories of me. I remember, you know, as a freshman, that was my, my first, you know, after red shirting, of course, and, and coming back, that was my first real challenge to, uh, you know, to become a starter. And so, you know, for a lot of a lot of guys out there, especially you know the younger kids, um, you know, freshmen and sophomores at Oregon, this is their chance, this is their shot to try to, you know, get some playing time. So, you know, it's a big. Deal. So it's not just practice; it's actual game time. You really got to show off your stuff. Definitely, you know, it might be, you know, uh, some of the guys who've been starting for two or three years, you know, they might not really like it, but <laughs> this gives some of those those untested um, young guys coming up. You know, a chance to really show their stuff. How many? Uh, how many of the alums that you played with uh, usually show up to this game? You know, there's a quite a few. I think there's about a hundred, um, hundred and twenty. They're, what they what they do is they have a, a golf tournament. You know, for all the Oregon alumni football players on Friday, and then you know, expect those guys to stay the night and then show up for the spring game. So they try to make a you know a big deal out of it. So how's your golf game? My golf game is not where it should be. <laughs> You know, when I was playing professional football, we had, you know, we had a long off season. You know, we had Tuesdays was our day off, which is, you know, if I wasn't injured, it was our golf day. You know, so I got a lot of golf in, even during the season. Now, when I'm, you know, I'm working and, you know, you know. You're not down at the I, Charles Barker level, though, are you? No, 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 no. I can, I think I can take it. So what we're going to do this week, uh, add a little spice to the video, we're going to bring one of the players in. So we got J.J. Johnson from the Portland Monarchs going to step in. And he actually, uh, one of the things we learned about is uh, he was in, involved in one of the camps uh, earlier in the decade where, uh, where Alex was involved with uh, J.J. Burden and uh, Anthony Newman. Is it defensive back or in wide receiver or just wide receiver? Um, I... Uh 
for the camp? Yeah. I think it was both. It, 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 was, it was a total football team. Quarterbacks. Yeah, it was yeah. all skill positions. Mm -hmm. And one of the great things, they played on a grass field. How about that? <laughs> Not as much rain as in Sally, though. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, JJ, how's it, what's it like to be at the top of the league and get everybody fired up at, fired up after you, both on the field and off the field? <laughs> uh, it's, it's good. It's, it's definitely a challenge. Um, something that keeps us motivated and driven. We definitely step up to the challenge. You know, we've got a lot of stuff to work on, a lot of young guys learning the system and still knowing what it's like to be on top um, with a whole new squad. I mean, we've got a lot of guys back, but a lot of new guys um, getting a lot of playing time this year. So it's definitely fun, definitely a challenge. Um, got a big game this week, got to travel, just, you know, five and a half hours down to Cape Paul, so we're looking forward to that. How, how often do you guys uh, take a bus ride down there where it's usually just Everybody drive on their, um, their depends on depends on the road game. K Falls, um, two years ago we took a bus. With Nashville we take a bus. Anywhere that's over a certain amount of hours we usually take a bus. Three hours, four hours. So the uh, the league forum uh, lit up pretty good this week uh, after the uh, after the Monarchs win at the Springfield. Um, and you know I, I noticed that you're always one of the players who defends the Monarchs the most. So you know we give you a little bit of time here to talk at the league and say give it. Uh, Give us your viewpoint on why, why you guys are so good. Personally, I, I wasn't there, but um, I was rehabbing the shoulder. But um, from the, the sounds of it, you know, it was something that needed to be worked on. I mean, realistically, um, onside kick is something that we don't practice every day. We don't even practice during the season. So, given this, you know the nature that we were up a little bit, um, we still need a lot of work put in to get ready for K Falls. Um, the offense wasn't clicking last week. We really haven't clicked for four quarters this whole year. So. We want to get the ball back in the offense hands and see what they can do. Um, I mean, last week we had three of the starting four our receivers were even there. Um, so they they really wanted to see what the, the younger guys and the newer guys could do and step it up, and you know they came through. So, but league wise, every single week, <laughs> and I actually put this in, asked specifically, hey, what do you guys think about the Monarchs after teams win or lose? And everybody's got you on the uh, on the list of you know what if we don't win any other game, we want to beat those guys. Well, yeah, everybody wants to take down that. You know, two-time defending champions. I mean, we're I mean, we're looking for national championship this year, and anybody beats us, I mean, that's gone. So realistically, I mean, if you can, if you can hang with us for you know the full 60 minutes, I mean, more power to you. But I mean, we're gonna bring it, and uh, we look forward to the rest of the season. All right, some pretty tame words from Jake. <laughs> um, so hey, Alex, what the how did, did how often did you get that uh, being the, the top dog team wise? I mean, it seemed like you with your only had one year where there was really, really yeah yeah in the pros um, there was only one year I want to say a uh, year that we went to the playoffs when I was with the Saints um, and we started winning. We won early, so you know once you know guys started coach started getting into standings, they you know. They got to know that this is the team that we have to be. And, um, you know, in, in college at the University of Oregon, you know, my last two years, my junior and senior year was, you know, when we went to uh, the Rose Bowl and Cotton Bowl, respectively. You know, we, before the season, they knew, you know, what to expect from us. And so everybody, we was the, like, we was the top dog that teams wanted to, wanted to uh, gear up for. Did, did you hear that or read that in, in uh, papers and know that these guys are coming coming at you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know what? You got to have a certain swagger, you know, and I think, you know, that's what we had and that's why we were so successful. All right. That's football. Uh, you know, we got the Blazer game coming up tonight, so hopefully the Blazers will get some of that swagger. <laughs> All righty. Uh, I'm Cliff Fenning. We got J.J. Johnson here, the Monarchs, and Alex Molden. We'll talk at you next week again at OFL Weekly.